Greetings, prop makers of the world. We are adventuring into the world of prop making once again, and this time we're going to be building a pirate cannon, but this sucker is too big to be doing in just one video without you falling asleep or making it into some sort of crazy documentary. Regardless, this is the base that we're going to be building in this video. It's a pretty, no, I'm not going to say it's a straightforward build. It's actually pretty complicated, but the end result is amazing. It looks a little bit matte right now because one of the final things is a very thin coat to make it all shiny, but I'll do that after it's all finished aging. Uh, just a quick note, my microphone broke while I was recording this video and I didn't realize it, so quite a bit of the audio in this video is not exactly where I'd want it to be. Hopefully it's fixed pretty quick here. Anyways, I hope you enjoy the video. This is going to be a fantastic, fun build by the time it's all done, and we'll end up with a cannon when we're done. <laughs> And welcome to the great outdoors got a little bit of a support unit over here today so we're gonna get right into this cannon build now this is four inch styrofoam graciously donated to by my father who happened to have a stack of this stuff sitting around this is expensive you can actually go with three and a half if you really want to but anyways in the document down below which I'll be referring to a lot because a lot of measurements on here I don't need to refrain and talk about all over again so you can see the styrofoam is a bit beat up it's going to be the side of a cannon it'll add to the character of the actual wood so what we need to do now is we're going to be putting in where our cannon actually sits on the top of this now i'm using a piece of a carpet cardboard carpet tube to be the cross support on my cannon so what i did is i took it and i traced it onto a piece of paper folded it in half so when it comes into here I know exactly how deep I need to draw that circle to get my head like pretty much so the uh, carpet tube sits halfway in and halfway out. Anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be going to cut this out, sand it with a spindle sander to get it all smooth, and then I'm going to go over the wood texture. Anyways, I'll be back. Okay, as you can see here now, I've got the chalks for the axles cut out on both sides. This one's at 11 inches, this one's at 10 inches. Like I said, it's on the picture down below. Now this you can see you can go through and you can just do the straight lines if you really want to but on the one picture I found I found a really interesting thing that they did here well this used to be like one this should be one big piece of wood and this bottom piece should be one big piece of wood but what I really liked is they had this notch in here so any of the lateral force from the cannon firing would push back against this notch here and this would all hold it together it's really not supposed to be here. I just really like the way it looked to add some authenticity to how the cannon looked. I like that stepped look. I was even going to go so hard and put another one up here. But anyways, you have to do this with both sides, get it all ready to go, and then I'm gonna go and cut with the knife. I'm gonna do hard grooves here, and then I'm gonna be doing lighter grooves and then using a steel brush to, to pull out the, the features on it. But I'll be back after I get at least one done just to show you exactly how I did it and go from there. Now, as you can see, we are a lot closer to where we want to be with this. And the great thing about three separate tiles is I can show you the process, how to get it from here into the final wood form. So the first step is I use an X-Acto knife and coming in at about a 45 degree angle, I do these both ways, opposing sides, and then take out the piece. I do this all over. This is very much uh, by eye. You don't want to do too many, but you want to do enough. Now, the second one, you'll see that I've used a uh, rotary Dremel to do these extra hits because I like the variation. Then nothing looks completely linear and the same. You can mess it up. Now, the final step to get these boards to go from cool to amazing is a wire brush. You just take it and using various levels of pressure, you end up with this absolutely stunning grade. And then to finish it all off, you use your heat gun. Now, just to go over a quick other few things on this, on the end caps here, you'll see here. When you're doing the grain here, remember how boards are made. This comes out of a tree, so your ring grain will be on the end here. So have fun, mix it up, put them at different angles. Just be sure that this is something small. But if you do the end grain on this side, that on this end you match it again so it looks the same and then once you're all done it looks something like this see this this is the bad side 
to the inside so that's why you can see all the extra hits and the such go to the inside here I didn't want them to be seen completely on the inside you don't have to be as detailed because you're not going to see it but put some work into it because you'll see it through the side of the cannon and how it's going to look but anyways now I'm going to go through I'm going to start building the center posts and the rear post and talking about the wheel bogies and all that but anyways I'll be back again I'll be back to talk more about it see you in a few Right, you're probably picking up some wind sound here so I'll be careful if you hear it I apologize it's always windy here so anyways what I've done here is this is going to be the cutout for where the cannon rests into it I don't want this to be tight so I've deliberately made it a wider arc than it needs to be so what I did is I came in an inch and a quarter on each side measured halfway on the 13 inches wide here and ended up at 6.5 then using strangely enough a five liter bucket lid I drew the first half rolled it over and drew the second half then it gives it because you'll see here once I put this lid back on how there's a bit oh the shadow getting it a bit but you can see how there's a bit of wiggle room on each side so you are not going to be in absolute trouble if this is not perfect anyways the cannon just needs to sit into this area and I'm making it looser than tighter but anyways uh, these are our pieces that we're going to be cutting up now and well they're already cut these are the 13 by 23 and a half and if this isn't exactly 24 because especially with this insulation that I have as notches on the ends that I normally cut off which takes it off the 24 inches this part here does not have to be exactly 24 as per the plan you can make it a bit shorter you can even be this really short I'm just pretty much using the width that I have and then this one is the 17 and a half and then this is the four and a half and these all come together pretty quickly um, but I'll go over what I actually texture on them when I come back all right so this is just a very dry fit that piece up there has to be angled but I just wanted to go over which sides you want to texture so you can see here the you want the bottom and the side of this one actually you can do three sides of that very bottom piece this top one you need to do the top the middle this part here the only thing you don't have to do is these sides that are inside here but you do want to do a little bit of texture there now on here I did this as a curve you don't have to I just thought it looked cool so might as well and I just used the template from there on there to make it look good now you see here this is once again the end grain you want to replicate because when you come down you'll see that the grain continues on to here like I said this is going to be an angle backwards to match the cannon barrel that sits into this but anyways these next time you see them are going to be painted but I'm going to start working on the wheels next and you see here this is that four and a quarter inch carpet tube that I was speaking about this is amazing stuff and I'm uh, I only have like two pieces of it left which I'm using up all on this cannon um but regardless it's just I got to go to the carpet store and find some more of that stuff it's brilliant and they probably have tons of it sitting around that they're just willing to give good place to go looking for supplies anyways um all said and done this is looking really good right now we're going to be um putting a screw through the side to hold this all together and then we're going to be putting in some accents to kind of finish it up but regardless i wanted to bring you to here this is just dry assembly like i said nothing specific in the plan i'll make sure i list exactly where that four and a half should end up and where the angle of this should end up because we're dealing with a cannon that actually has specific flow throughs it's kind of hard to wing it sometimes. Anyways, I'll be back. Okay, so you can see that I've got all the tubes cut per the lengths as specified. Now here, you can see that I've got the wheel starting to go on. And of course I can't cut these all on the bandsaw. I'm sorry for the shadows, it's quite bright out here today. And um, I'm actually getting burned, look at that. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be cutting these four wheels and they are a size 10 inches. If you don't mind wasting styrofoam, you can go to 12 inches or 11 inches or a bit bigger. I went with this size because I can guarantee I can get four wheels out of the leftover sheet that I used for the center. So now, you'll see here, this is how we're going to go about getting these things cut out because we have to get the center out of these. But what I did to draw these, first of all, is I used my handy dandy, uh, wooden measuring stick that I made which is linked up here and 
the only thing I had to do different is I had to c cut one more hole to do four and a quarter because this is done in half inch increments. Anyway, when I did that, it allowed me to draw all the circles needed to make these four wheels. Now, this is the fun part. This is four inches. My hot knife, my hot wire knife won't go. I think it's two and three quarters. So what I had to do is I had to come up with another way of doing this. So using, let me put this over, sorry about that. And the wind is just giving her out here. So what I had to do is I flip this over and then using a brand new knife, I cut through as deep as I could, as careful as I could through the center. And then with a very hard hit, I broke it in half. You can actually probably see the texture difference there from where I cut to where I broke it. And it can be crooked because all we're going to be doing is we're just going to be gluing this back together. Do this four times, but before you glue it, take a piece of your pipe or your axle and dry fit it to make sure that when that glues, that axle is still going to fit decently because you don't want to be fighting it after you've glued it all. So. I'm going to go back and once I have these all cut out, I'll talk, I'm going to be texturing these and I'll be back to talk about the texture and a little bit more about that. Anyways, I'll return. Well, I got a tiny bit ahead of myself last night and I realized that I didn't talk about the texturing on these wheels. So it's pretty straightforward. Do the same thing you did with the other wood. Put a couple gashes in, wire wool. On the edges here, because we're going to be covering this with a secondary treatment, you can just do a straight one and you don't have to do the back but you can if you want it's really hidden and the chance of anybody seeing it is really really low but anyways you're making four of those of course it's four wheels to the cart i don't know how you get away with doing less and if you do i would like to see a picture of that regardless as you can see everything's starting to come together here i got some little white spots i need to clean up in them but beyond that we're going to continue on. Uh, I got a, I've got a whole bunch of painting to do. Then we're going to go over the accent colors and dry brushing and all that. And then we assemble this thing after we get all the painting done. See you in a bit. Now, I'm going to have to work around my tripod here because it's right here and blocking everything because, you know, all normal people work on the floor. So we're going to be getting into the axles very quickly here and how we're going to finish them up. So using the end of the pipe, I drew a circle onto EVA foam and using the little tutorial that's up there, I turned it into kind of a metal cap and put some little rivets on just because even though these aren't supposed to be here, they look cool, so they get to be put on. Then using a bit of black wash, you muddy up the end of this pipe and you can even do a little bit of dry brushing with a lighter color too to bring up the grain. You're not gonna see a lot of this and you can do a lot of this at the very end but if you want to, you can do it now. But on the main shaft, you want to do a little bit more aging like here. You can see how much darker this one is. And on the end here, you can see just how much mess that I made. Uh, one extra little thing is you can see I used a knife to cut in some gashes here just to make it look a little bit more realistic. And once you're done, use the hot glue to stick that onto the end of the pipe. Now, this is going to be the axle finished, but of course, we've got wheels to go on. You're like, so, and you did nothing to talk about this. Well, I didn't, but I'm going to now. So, from the wheels that we cut earlier, all I did was using a standard brown, like my brown base coat, I used a little bit of cashmere tan to bring up the details on the side with a little bit of dry brushing. Now, once the dry brushing is all finished and dry, using some black wash, you don't have to be stupidly... Uh, light on this you want it to be a bit dark all I do is if I'm going to Kleenex around here I'll show you exactly how this goes on you take it you put it on like so and you see that it goes on dark and you're like holy saw and I think you screwed up on camera but no once you've got it this is where I knock things over because I'm trying to move things around the camera so once it's on you do a small area and then use a Kleenex you dab off a little bit of it and you can see how it ends up leaving it in all the gaps darkening up the surface mellowing everything out and making it look somewhat like oh, no, actually somewhat like this one you can see just how much nicer that looks once you've got the dark and the light in there just adds so much character to the actual piece now the next step is is the metal trim here 
So what you wanna do is with the 10 inch wheels, pretty much take, well, your typical pie. You know, if your radius is 12 inches, times it by 3.14, and you will get how long this strip of rubber has to be, or this, this rubber, this EVA foam. And this is just a thin quarter inch gym mat. You can tell by the back. So what you do is you go through, uh, chamfer the edges, and then using the actual uh, sanding drum Dremel bit, you just hit this a thousand times. I, I did this four full times, and I counted, I think, to 220 once before I got bored. So it's, uh, I could say something rather specific like, Yes, you need to do exactly 235 little divots in order for it to be realistic. <laughs> so, once you've got all that done, take a can of spray paint. I use the oil rub bronze that I'm going to be using on the majority of the actual, uh, the, the majority of the actual cannon body and the metal parts on it. I'll put a link to that one down below and how can you tell I've been using washes? Holy, look at those hands. So once you're done that, using spray glue, like so, you spray the outside of this very gently, just kind of hit the center, but on the actual band here, you want to hit the full width. Once it dries for about two minutes, because you're kind of treating like contact cement, you're gonna take it, you're gonna stick this end down, drop in two sewing pins just to hold this end in place. And then what you do is you just very gently feed it around, keeping it as visually center as possible. And you'll come all the way around. You don't wanna go exact measurement. Like this is 33 inches and I only need like, I think it was 31 and a quarter. So what you do is you bring it around to here and then use a knife, you mark this side, you mark this side and then you cut straight across and what it does is it gives you a perfect fit so when you're all finished it'll look something like this at the joint you can see that i put some pins in those can come out later they're just really good for helping the glue set so it doesn't get a whole bunch of extra pressure and this here was masking tape because i initially masked it out so i could spray glue it yeah that didn't work out too well and Sorry if this looks a little dark, it is, these are dark colors, you know, I didn't want to have a nice, bright and shiny, happy cannon. I want an ugly, dark and angry cannon. Anyways, once you're all done, you're going to be putting these onto here as your axle and it looks really cool. As we get closer towards the end of the actual project, we're going to be doing a bit more weathering. But since this, this is going to be assembled and finished on this part of the cannon, I did the weathering now, so I didn't have to do it later. You can do this all at the end, but regardless. Uh, the next step you're gonna see is I'm gonna be doing some general assembly, and that's as far as we're gonna bring it this time. And then we're gonna be moving on to the cannon because there's some parts here that tie into each other. Anyways, I'll quit yammering. I'm going to go get all of these wheels done, all of these banding done, everything stuck together. And then I'll talk about just how you, actually, no, I'll just talk about it right now. These wheels, you don't have to screw these into place if you don't want to. What I'm gonna suggest you do is once the whole thing is assembled to where you want it, because this wiggles in here a little bit, you have a few options to keep things moving nicely. You can put a piece of like tape or anything in there just to allow it better sliding. And if you have it like that, then you can. Or if this is more of a fixed prop, I'm going to be putting a screw through the back here to hold this wheel exactly in place. So whenever it gets moved, all I do is I move the, the whole axle and just keep on dropping the bogies in and out. So I will be back and we'll keep on going. See you in a bit. All right, we are at our final stopping point for this week. Uh, I have to break this thing into multiple videos. It's just simply too large to do all at once. So. Everything here is just kind of dry fit. The wheels aren't attached to the axles and there's going to be more effects that we're gonna be putting, like we're gonna be putting some uh, metal here and on the other side. And of course, we are missing an entire cannon, which kind of is needed to make it a cannon. Right now, it's just a very cool looking go-kart. Anyways, so on my plan, you will see how you glue this in and how you glue this. Now, depending on the size of your cannon and the size of the barrel that you go with, this swoop here differs. But with a 10 inch barrel, you want to have at least one inch of clearance from here to here. 
That way when the barrel actually sits in here, it sits into that, that depression so everything fits together. So anyways, when we are all done in this thing, I'm going to be putting a coat of varathane on this. So it's going to go from this matte look to a very shiny look, which I kind of want on this because, you know, it's a cannon and they, they had to repaint these things every 15 minutes so they didn't rust out. But anyways, we're going to stop here for this uh, video. Thanks so much for hanging out. I hate to leave you with the cliffhanger of an incomplete prop, but I hope you understand. We'll be back next week to build the actual cannon barrel, which is already in process off to the side, which you can't see. But anyways, once I've got that, you'll be able to build the whole cannon. And then the final video that we're going to have is going to be doing all of the accent, all the accents, the aging and adding the extra little things here and there to make it into a full cannon. Anyways, thanks for hanging out. I will catch you next time. Have a good one.